Hi guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. My name is Ash, you'll know me as Bromma18. Today we're continuing our FIFA 22 custom tactics series. This is the series where I show you how to recreate real systems in game, but there is a spin. Today we begin sort of a spin-off for the series and that is where we start to cover classic tactics. Tactics from bygone years and ages of some of the best teams um, to ever grace the earth. For those of you who are new to the channel, um, this is what I would like to call the home of real FIFA tactics on YouTube. You know, I feel like no one does it better than us. Um, you know, absolutely your number one place to go. You know, I recently came across a small YouTube channel, new, um, that was, you know, doing the same videos, recreating real tactics, and literally just copied my videos completely. Like the presentation, the layout, um, the titles, even the phrases that they were saying in their videos, things that they were saying, clearly they've watched mine and just taken it and clearly copied it, carbon copy, like clear plagiarism. So I like to say, this is your absolute number one home and nowhere does it better. So thank you for sticking with me and joining me today. Now, a couple of quick notices. One, we are today covering Sir Alex Ferguson's treble winners tactic. That is the team from the 98-99 season, of which won the FA Cup, the Premier League, and of course, the Champions League. And this is actually come about because of a vote I did, and that came from my Patreon. And what you can do is not only do you get access to votes for future videos on the channel, but also you can get access to exclusive tactics videos where I cover more niche teams, as well as my FIFA 22 custom tactics package, where I give a deep dive breakdown of every single tactic that we do cover on the channel, including ratings, rankings, suitable traits and attributes for each position, pros and cons, and a whole lot more. Get a whole range of other perks, great way to support the channel and get some good rewards for yourself as well. The second notice, now obviously what I do usually for these videos when we're doing current teams is because of the fact I'm a certified scout, I get access to a lot of resources like Instat where I can actually go and analyse the teams and watch full games uh, and I'm able to watch quite a lot of games and do that. Now with tactical uh, videos on classic teams it's a little bit different. I don't have access to those full games so I have to sort of rely on more footage online and stuff like that. Lots of uh, analysis and stuff like that so um, it's a little bit more raw but I've done my best to try and recreate the tactic and replicate it as best as I can. Now then, enough talking, let's get into the system. Um, let me know what you think, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it as well. And on that note, let's begin. So then, the 442 is what we have here. We're very renowned, um, you know, for trying to, or this system, should I say, is very renowned for being adaptable. And a 442 allows you to do that because you can really do a whole lot of approaches with this system. And that was very much what Sir Alex Ferguson was about, particularly in those days, you know, looking 20 years ago plus. Um, it was more about teams who could adapt to the opposition. And that was really where a lot of them got, um, you know, including Man United, got a lot of their success from. So what we've done is we've gone for the 442 holding. You don't need to change any other positions here. But why we go for this rather than the 442 flat is because of these central midfielders with them being defensive midfielders what you get instead is two midfielders who are going to be more defensively minded and what they do is a better job of protecting your defense very hard to defend on this game um, even more so when you don't have a defensive midfielder as i spoke about in my defensive tactic tutorial so with these being dropped off a bit more it will enable you to do that it gives you a little more protection obviously still a challenge but something that you can deal with a little bit more efficiently if and when you need to. So that's just it for the formation then. What I'll also sort of allude to you guys, and we'll talk about it a bit later, is I've got a balanced tactic here. I also have a defensive and attacking game plan as well to try and replicate that adaptability that we've just spoken about. So at the end of this balanced tactic, I'm going to talk you through the defensive and attacking game plans and show you how they, they tweak a little bit depending on the opposition or the situation that they're in, whether they're a goal down, a goal ahead, etc. Right then, on to the tactics. First things first, let's talk about defensively and what they do off the ball. Well, defensive style, we've got pressure on heavy touch. And what you'll notice and what I found in researching them was often whenever they tried to put pressure on the team and on the ball, it was more to do with when they would occasionally coordinate a press together. It wasn't relentless. It wasn't always when they lost a ball. Sometimes they'd try and regain their shape. It was more to do with the opposition when someone such as, say, Andy Cole, Dwight York, Ryan Giggs would instigate more of a press. 
um, and that's what we're really looking to do here. You can also use down and then left on your D-pad and that will then integrate a short team press um, so that you can filter that in as well and it's really, really handy. Width is down to 14 to make sure it's nice and compact, nice and narrow, particularly in a 442 system, you need to make sure you are cutting out all gaps as much as possible as it's a little bit easier for the opposition to play through you with only two midfielders and two centre backs rather than three. So we've got this on 14 and you get a nice compact, narrow system. Um, with the depth, it's onto 60, and that's what's going to give you a mid block. But it's on 60 as opposed to something a little bit lower, just to try and make you a little bit less passive. Try and push the block up a little bit more to try and complement that pressure on heavy touch approach. It's also worth remembering that with the likes of defenders like Yapstam, Gary Neville, for example. Um, relatively quick for their positions, um, particularly in that time period as well. Um, so it enables you to push it up a little bit more um, and then still be able to cover. Obviously, with this team, sort of the likes of around Wambi Saka, Teles, etc., you've got a little bit of pace there as well to help, um, you know, that 60 line. So offensively, what do they do with the ball? Well, it's worth mentioning that they're very adaptable. And what I've got here enables you to do that. So we've got slow build up which means that they will show for the ball when playing through the thirds. However, sometimes they would still play long, they would look to go over the top, they would look to play balls in behind, and you can still do that because whilst you're going to have the deeper players, the defensive midfielders, the fullback, centre-back coming short and showing for the ball, you will have the forwards up top, you'll have the wingers looking to sometimes get in behind as well. Um, and that's going to allow you to have a versatility between long ball and then playing through the thirds. So this is actually the best way to do it because if you then have it on fast build up or long ball, you know, you're not going to get the centre backs and defenders showing for the ball as much. And you want both. You want the the option, particularly on goal kicks, to be able to do that. So slow build it gives you the best variety between playing through the thirds and then going long or, or playing quickly as well. Couple that in with chance creation being on forward runs. What you've got is a system where you've just got a lot of movement from a whole range of players. The likes of Ryan Giggs, Cole, York, even David Beckham, etc. You know, you've got a lot of players here who have got just incredible amounts of stamina and energy, good pace as well from some of them. So they're able to utilize that to, to their advantage. And in particular, again, a reflection of the time period more than anything, because with forward runs, you, you often had a lot of players just utilizing their movement as much as possible. It was less sort of measured, a little bit of a faster tempo, a bit more end to end -y in some cases. So forward runs does allow you to replicate that. The width is up to 70, and that's going to give you a wide formation, and that's what this team was very much known for, their strength in the wide areas. Lots of crosses into the box, lots of trying to create and utilise space in those wide areas. Obviously, with it being a 4-4-2, it's a little bit harder to build it through the central areas, even if you do have a striker dropping off occasionally. Um, so we're looking to try and utilise those wide areas, and that's what in being 70 does help us to do. Now, we haven't gone all the way up to 80, 90, 100, because it's going to give you a little bit of leeway in your defensive width. You're obviously going to be having to be compact, get back into your shape. If we go to 100, you'll find it's a bit more extreme. They're really out on the touchline. At least in this instance, you've got a bit more of a, a measured approach in that regard. The players in the box is up to seven, and it's going to give you three to four different players in the box. Naturally, you're going to have the two strikers. You're probably going to have a winger, which would usually be Giggs, because it's often the likes of Neville and Beckham crossing the ball in. And you may have someone like Scholes occasionally getting into there as well. But not always, because he's sort of playing that hybrid role between a deeper playmaker and then someone who is sort of making later runs into the forward areas. The corners and free kicks are both up to four. Now, I've always said this is down to personal preference, and I've tried to tailor these to the teams, depending on the team. But in this case, generally what they're going to look to do, they're set pieces relatively standard. You just get your best, your biggest and your, your best targets into the box, centre-backs, strikers, etc., um, and then, you know, just try and work it from there, really. There weren't a lot of innovation in terms of their set pieces from what I could find, not much sort of corners. Um, so we just stick both of these up to four, and you get a nice amount of plays into the box, and also enough showing and protecting you from the counter-attack as well. So then, let's talk about the player instructions. Starting off with the keeper and David De Gea, we have him on comes to crosses. It's going to make sure to relieve a lot of pressure from you in the defensive areas, because he's going to be coming out and clearing the ball. Goalkeepers... Fairly well protected in this game. You'll see in the gameplay above me if you're 
just analog, well, glancing at it occasionally, is that often when Bayern Munich did try and look to, to put balls into the box, he was often there to claim, um, other than the goal where everyone decided to freeze. Um, so make sure he's on counter crosses, but saving outside the box, um, in this case, Schmeichel, you know, he didn't really come out of his box too often. Um, and that's really what we're trying to replicate here. So with the two centre backs, Everything is the same apart from interceptions. You want one of these on aggressive interceptions. And what this does is it's a way of replicating Yap Stam. Yap Stam would often try and step out and use his physical uh, traits of which he was excelled in that area. Not just strong, but also quick off the mark as well for a centre-back. Um, we're trying to, to replicate that. Now, we've used this as the left centre-back in this case because the right centre-back, or the right defensive midfielder, should I say, um, is going to be Roy Keane. And we'll come on to that very, very shortly. But in this case, I have the left centre-back as aggressive interceptions, and that's trying to replicate that Yap Stam role. Right then, on to the two full-backs. We have two different instructions. So first things first, with the right-back, in this case, Gary Neville, we've got him on joining attack and overlap. He's obviously a very energetic fullback, often like to get up and down the pitch, put a lot of crosses into the box. That's how we're going to get the best out of him. Now, naturally, you've got Wambi Saka if you're playing as Manchester United in the game, who's not quite as attacking, um, but does have the traits to do it, should you wish. So he does suit that role actually quite well. However, on the other side, in which we have Tellers, who would have been, of course, Irwin, we have his run type on inverted, um, and his attacking runs on balance, because what I found is that he didn't get forward as much he would do sometimes um, but he'd often because of the fact it's a 4-4-2 to give that little bit of protection to the defensive midfielders with there only being two central midfielders he would often sort of hold his position a little bit more look to try and cancel out any opposition counter attacks and that's what we're trying to do here so with inverted and balanced attack you get him into a little bit more central areas you complement the left winger as well who's going to be Ryan Giggs who we're going to get staying out wide really getting onto the touchline creating as much width as possible um, and it's going to enable you to complement that as well so keep him unbalanced and then inverted run types now then on to the two central midfielders we've got McTominay and Fernandez here this would have been really sort of a, a Keane and Scholes um, sort of approach so with Roy Keane we've got him a Scott McTominay here and he's going to be that more aggressive defensive midfielder so He's attacking support, he's stay back while attacking, naturally. We don't want him getting forward, he's going to hold the line. He's not only a possessional pivot, but he's also um, there to, to act as that out-and-out ball-winning midfielder as well. His interceptions is aggressive, um, and as we've spoken about with Yap Stam as well, both of these are on aggressive interceptions, and that's why we want them on different sides, because you don't want them both on aggressive interceptions, because you're going to find yourself more open on that one side. That's why you want the left centre back and then the right defensive midfielder or the left defensive midfielder and then the right centre back but just make sure those two aggressive interceptions are on different sides um, his possess defensive position is cover centre and that's important as well because again you've only got two centre midfielders and two centre backs so you need to make sure you're manning those areas you know the wing areas that are going to be exposed if they are because you've committed you can then drag him out manually. But with him on cover centre, he will man those central areas. Now, his defensive behaviour is balanced. And what I've often spoken about in these videos is how man marking doesn't really work on this game because they don't follow the central midfielders. However, this system and Ferguson's approach in general throughout his years at Manchester United was more of a man marking approach. Not really that sort of lane press that we've spoken about um in the past so those are the two terms i like to use i like to use lane press and a man press um that i've sort of made it just to make it easier for you guys to to understand and so what we have here is a more of a man marking system but because man marking doesn't work as much i've actually opted for balance to try and get at least something working you don't want to uncut passing lanes because it just doesn't replicate the system as it would have been it is a man man to man system and that's the same with the other central midfielder as well. We've got him on balance defence. This time, though, on attacking support, he's on balance as well. As we spoke about with Skulls, sometimes he'd play that deeper line playmaker and sometimes he's going to make runs into the box or into those more advanced areas. But we don't want him getting forward all the time. We don't want him making runs in beyond the strikers all the time. That's why we've got it on balance because it does create a more fairer and realistic replication of it. His interceptions were on normal, and his defensive position is also on cover centre, but this time with positioning freedom, he's on free roam. And as that deeper line playmaker, he's the one who's going to be showing for the ball more, getting into more pockets of space, um, and providing an option to recycle and progress possession. So onto 
the wingers then. Marcus Rashford, in this case, would have been um, the Ryan Giggs out on the left. So his defensive support is on comeback on defence. And that is the same um, for Jadon Sancho as well on the other side, who would, of course, be in that Beckham role. But this time, with his chance creation, it's stay wide. And he's the one who's really going to be trying to get into as much space as possible out wide and then penetrate the opposition with his runs, which in this case are on getting behind, utilising that pace and energy as much as possible. In fact, you will find in the gameplay, we do find some success with that, with Rashford. I'm pretty sure he does score in this game. I can't actually remember, but, um, you know, again, he finds a lot of success and, and a lot of joy in those areas. And finally, on support on crosses, he's on getting to the box with a cross as well. Sometimes, obviously, Obviously, he'll be the one crossing the ball in, um, but often it might be one of the right-sided players. So, on the other hand, if we go over to Sancho, which is, of course, this Beckham role here, his chance creation is unbalanced, as are his support runs. Now, I sort of tampered with this for quite a while, trying to get the, the right balance, and in the end, I did sort of come to this, because what you find with him is, often, he would try and utilise his movement to run in behind, but also, they'd be trying to get him on the ball more, because then he'd be coming inside... And, and you know laying off passes or obviously getting wide and then crossing the ball in and utilizing those crossing situations as best as possible um, and this is really the best approach that I've found for it because what you find is that he then does a little bit of both he does good of coming short showing for an option feeding other players through or getting out wide getting into those crossing situations and then getting the ball in he does the best of everything and that's really what you're looking for in this case so with support on crosses it's on stay on the edge and that is again partly because you don't want too many players committing into the box with only having that those that four man midfield particularly when someone like the left winger is getting into the box and maybe even one of the central fielders as well um, but also what you've got here is often he's the one crossing the ball in and so as a result we don't really need him getting into the box so onto the two strikers then first off we've got two different roles here depending on um, you know which side they're on so with the right striker um, in this case it is Cavani where he's replicating that more that York role um, we've got stay central um, and that will be the same for Ronaldo in this case as well but with attacking runs it's on false nine and what this does is it does a good job of helping support those central areas again you've only got two central midfielders so how are you going to be able to fill the gaps if and when you need to and try and bridge that gap in between the midfield line and the attackers and this is really how you do it. You've got someone who's going to try and drop off, pick up the ball and go from there. You then should be able to work um, intricate pieces of play with the wingers, with the, the other attacker as well. And that's very, very important. Defensive support is also on comeback on defence. Make sure he's tracking back to help support his team. But then with the other striker, with defensive support, you go and stay forward. And he's going to play the role of that out ball. His support runs are also on stay central, but then attacking runs is getting behind, utilising that pace, really playing on the last man, um, and also in crossing situations as well. You'll find he's really trying to get on the end of the balls a bit better um, and sort of play those crossing situations more effectively. Right then, that rounds it off for the balance game plan. Now, obviously, I spoke to you about defensive and attacking game plans. Now, how does it change depending on the situations well let's talk about defensive first with the tactics what we've got here is it changes from pressure on heavy touch to drop back and that's very very important again it's highly adaptable if you want to try and retain um you know that sort of forward thinking approach trying to put the game in the opposition even when you're winning you can just keep it you don't have to do it but if you're starting to feel momentum changes which i did in the gameplay above um you will then have that option um so you change it to drop back but this time the depth goes to 40. now it's still a mid block and the reason why it's still a mid block is because it allows them and it allows you um by extension to still not be as passive and i think that's very very important you want to maintain an element of you know winning the ball back in the midfield area of the pitch rather than inviting the opposition into their attacking third and your defensive third um and then going from there Slow build-up and forward runs are the same as well, as is the width. This time with players in the box, though, it has gone down to five, and that means you're going to have two to three players in the box rather than on seven where you get three to four. Corners and free kicks is also down as well, just to give you a little bit of extra protection. These have been moved to three and three. There are also some changes to player instructions as well. Um, first things first, the fullbacks. Uh, this time we've changed the right back from uh, join the attack to balance just so he's not committing as much a little bit more reserved and then the left back this time is on stay back while attacking rather than balanced on top of that the central midfielder in this case the left center midfielder which would have been the skulls role 
you've got them as stay back while attacking rather than balanced. Um, and then with the the rest of the team in terms of the wingers, they're absolutely fine. You don't need to change any. The only thing that does then change in the attacking phase is the other striker will also, rather than on stay forward, be on basic defensive support, just so if and when he needs to, he can come in and fill out as well. So what about attacking wise then? Well, if we have a look here, it does change a little bit as well. If you're trying to press for a goal, if you're playing a team that maybe you feel you need to be more active against and you want something a bit more intense to put it on them a bit more well the defensive style changes to press after possession loss it's going to make your um, team be more of a counter pressing opposition as soon as they lose the ball they'll try and win it back for a certain amount of seconds the defensive width goes up to 28 to try and complement that press and then the depth also goes up to 70 as well and that's going to give you a high line and in this case what it does is again not only supplementing that press but also um, looking to try and make it harder for the opposition simply to play out because there's less space in their defensive areas and they might be forced to go long anyway. Offensively, we've this time moved players in the box up to nine, which means you're going to have four to five players. Now, with corners of re-kicks, I've kept this on four, um, but you can change it to five if it's a case of you really pressing for a goal and you've only got a few minutes left to go. So what about the player instructions in the attacking game plan then? Well, with the fullbacks, this time what you'll notice is the left back, he's on join the attack. So you're trying to get him forward all the time. Again, this is a case of if you're trying to, you know, go gung-ho um, and really go for broke. The central midfielder also on get forward, the left central midfielder that is, rather than on balanced. Again, trying to get him forward as much as possible. And then the two strikers also with defensive support, they are both on stay forward, which means they will be in a position for you to play out to them a bit quicker um, and have more options up front as well in those situations. So it's very, very important. Again, it just gives you a different bit of dynamic. It allows you to be a bit more adaptable depending on the situation and the opposition that you're playing against as well. Right then, that just about rounds it off for this video then. If you've enjoyed it, if you found it helpful, if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell uh, so you get notifications every time I upload and leave a like on the video as well. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. The link to that will be down below in the description and the comment section. Again, where you can get access to a whole range of great perks and rewards. Um, on top of that, check out all the links in the description, such as the link to my Twitter. Go and follow me on there, as well as the links to my affiliate links where you can get access to all of my equipment, all my gear. Um, great way to support the channel because I do get a little bit of kickback, but you don't have to pay any more than you were already going to. On that note, we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you soon.